Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Philip Ken Gotenda's play, Ballad of Yechio. Uh, so this is based at least generally on Gotenda's real life aunt, Yechio, um, who was kind of disowned by the family, I guess. Um, so they had been living in Hawaii, part of a, a Japanese um, immigrant community, primarily working in sugarcane fields. And Yachio was the brother of Gotenda's father. Um, she was sent to live with a couple of family friends, a husband and wife, um, basically to learn the traditional Japanese tea ceremony and these sort of traditional refinements, these, these behavioral refinements, um, which were very, very important in Japanese culture, but occupied more of a sort of a, an ambivalent position within an increasingly distinct Japanese-American culture. Um, but in the early 1900s, when this, uh, when this occurred and when this play is set, Japanese-American culture was not necessarily as distinct yet from Japanese culture because so many people uh, were first-generation immigrants born in Japan and came to the U.S., uh, in this case to Hawaii. Um, while Yachio was uh, with these these family friends, um, she got pregnant by the husband, and as a result, she sort of returned home in disgrace and ended up killing herself. So that's the general basis of Ballad of Yachio. It does it does tend to follow the the broad outlines of this story. But one of the things that um, that Gotanda says in the author's note here, um, he says he was not trying to sort of deal with big issues. He wasn't trying to tell the story as such. This is not this is not a biopic. It's not a biographical piece in a direct sense, even though it's it's clearly very strongly inspired by his aunt's experiences. What he says here is, Rather, this one for me was all about a tone, an emotional feeling that I felt in my body when I first heard her name and stayed with my body all through the journey of making it, unmaking it, and making it again. A kind of beautiful melancholy. That's all. That was it. Not an answer, not a political statement, just that. A tone. So, uh, I think one of the things that's really, really th so the the basic plot line of Ballad of Yochio follows the basic story. Um, Yochio is sent by her parents to uh, live with Hiro Takamura and his wife Sumiko, called uh, Okusan basically to learn tea ceremony and to learn pottery because Hiro Takamura was a is the the son of um, a famous artist basically in Japan um, he's a potter but in Japanese culture Chinese culture in in East Asia pottery and ceramics are a traditional art form in a way that they aren't as much necessarily in Western cultures. So, um, Hiro is the son of a famous artist. He was kind of disowned himself because he uh, is an alcoholic, he gambled too much, he chased women, etc., etc. Um, and so Hiro moves to Hawaii to try and start his own pottery uh, studio, basically, to, to try and become a great artist in the way that his father was. So this is one of the key things, I think, about this play. We get this sort of 
it's a it's a play that's fascinated with the construction of art and the way that we as people are constructed through the arts. So Hiro is dedicated to making great pottery, but he's also continually uncertain that he's going to be able to do so. He has this sort of existential terror that his father was right, <clears throat> that he is not going to be able to be successful, um, all this stuff. So while he, while he is an alcoholic, he does have an affair with a, a woman in the town, um, and he does end up having an affair with Yachio. The thing that he's, he only, the only thing he really seems to care about is pottery and making great pottery. Because this is the thing that kind of defines him for himself. Um, being able to prove to himself that he, that his father, not necessarily even that his father was wrong, but that he could do this. He could do what his father could do. So that's one element of the sort of artistic self-creation. The next one I want to talk about is Okusan, um, Kiro's wife. She is a, a master of the tea ceremony, which in traditional Japanese culture is an incredibly important, incredibly aesthetic, and incredibly formalized ceremony. Um, there is a massive amount of ritual and etiquette that goes with it. And basically, Yachio is sent to learn from her how to do this tea ceremony properly so that Yachio can attract a, uh, a proper Japanese husband. So, Kusan, on the one hand, has this sort of artistic dimension in the uh, in the tea ceremony itself. The other artistic dimension for her is she uses dolls, basically as puppets, to enact stories. And one of the stories that she enacts is the fear that she has that Hiro and Yachiko, uh, sorry, Yachiyo, um, are having an affair. So she plays this out through these dolls in an attempt to sort of gain control over the situation. But it's interesting because in most of the stories that she plays out with these dolls, she is in control. But with the Hiro and Yachio storyline, she feels like she doesn't have control. Like it is a, it is progressing regardless of her will. So there's an interesting dimension to this, uh, to this question of art, right? Hiro is very much focused on, I am defining myself through my creative powers. Okusan tries to do this, but it's not as clear that she is successful. The next person who has this very distinct um, investment in art is um, Hisao Matsumoto, uh, which is Yachigo, uh, Yachio's papa. Um, so he has a couple of different sort of artistic elements. He's an out-of-work cane sugar harvester. Um, he's an older guy. He's not particularly physically fit to work in the fields anymore. But he needs to work because he needs money, obviously. This is, you know, the world that we live in. Um, and so Papa has had these different ideas for making money, one of which was to import a bunch of silkworms from Japan to start producing silk. And silk, again, is another traditional East Asian art form. Um, the making of fine silks and the designing of fine silks can be a very profitable business, but he's unsuccessful at this. Um, Yachio, at one point, finds out that he had written poetry. 
and he tells her that he burned all of his poems when they moved to Hawaii because his wife, um, Takayo, uh, Takayo Matsumoto, uh, called Mama in the play, um, because Mama had basically convinced him that for people working in agricultural labor in uh, Hawaii, poetry was not important. It wasn't a thing that had value. And so Papa burned his poems, but then partway through, toward the end, really, he goes, he, he writes to Yachio, um, where she's staying uh, with the Takamoras, and, and says, I've begun writing poetry again. So there is this sort of return to his roots, return to the thing that seemingly brought him joy. And the upshot of this ultimately is that the um, the shop owner who uh, who the Matsumotos had owed a lot of money to basically hires Papa to write love letters on behalf of the, the sugarcane workers to be sent back to Japan to try and attract wives. Papa is so successful at this that the shop owner then takes him on to do official correspondence and, and keep the books and things like this for the shop. So Papa's sort of return to art is not only a sort of personal success in that he returns to something that was important to him, um, but it's also it also brings him financial success in a way that the sort of physical demands of sugar cane labor would have likely prevented. And then the last person, this one is the least artistic as such, but it is still, in a way, an artistic element. Yachio herself, one of her overarching concerns throughout this play is figuring out who she is. Because she doesn't know. she She's quite young. Um, she doesn't know who she is as a person yet. And so one of the things that she does, she has these sort of philosophical like moments where, where she'll be like, at night, sometimes I will go to my mirror and I will like reconstruct my face in my own mind in the darkness. Um but one of the things that she does is almost a collage type thing where she cuts images out of the Montgomery Ward catalog and sort of creates these fantasies or the, these sort of imagined futures in which she can afford those things. And it is, it's an art in the sense that there is a visualization that's done, that she is sort of imagining this future, she's constructing, not even storylines necessarily, but she's constructing this sort of image of a world in which this is the case. And she's doing it through the visual media of the Montgomery Ward catalog. But it's ultimately about sort of defining the self, creating a particular self. 